Hi, I'm CJ Altmerg with TransWest Truck Trailer RV in Frederick, Colorado. We appreciate you tuning in this morning. So we've got a brand new Logan Coach stock combo sitting behind me. These stock combo trailers have become so popular, uh, you know, really over the last, you know, 10 years or uh, kind of plus or a really sought after trailer. And the big reason why is just their versatility. You can do so many things with these. I mean, you have a, a tack room that you can lock up, you know, keep items in the trailer, not having to move them you know, in and out. You've got a place if you want to throw a mattress in, spend a night in, but then you can haul livestock, you can haul horses, and then you can haul toys. So it gives you a lot of, again, options on what you actually want to haul. But again, this is a new Logan coach. Let's take a look at the drawing on this trailer so I can kind of show you some specs and what we're looking at. So we're 26 foot on the floor on this trailer. Uh, what we did is we actually went ahead and did a five foot tack room on this one with dual doors. So you have a, a tack door on each side of this. So you can access the tack room from either side of the trailer. You're seven three wide. That's standard width on a Logan on their standard models. And then from there you're seven foot tall. So again, those are kind of the standard options. We do a lot of these in 24 footers, but uh, as a sales staff, we kind of got together and one of the, a lot of the feedbacks we got was, is hey, you know, some of these people want a little bit more stall area. So we do this option in a 24 footer as well. You can do it in a 20, but you know, you have a five foot front tack room. In order to do what we want to do is, as I'll walk you through and show you these swing out saddle racks. So we need a little bit more, uh, you know, front tack room space there. But as far as that's concerned, we'll walk you through some of these options because there's some standard options that we, we have on this trailer and then there's some upgrades that we did just to kind of set the trailer apart and just kind of meet the needs of what we feel our clientele really likes and, and, and what they're looking for in today's world. So let's talk about a Logan first and foremost before we get in this because I want you to I want to point out a couple things. We have a galvanized steel frame with aluminum body. So the galvanized steel is not going to rust like black steel will. You know, it, when you're looking at the comp competition in this kind of price range, uh, a lot of them will have black steel. So there is the chance of rust where this galvanized steel, you have a lifetime corrosion warranty on this trailer as long as you're the first owner on it. Uh, as far as the rest of the warranty is concerned, you have an eight year structure and then a two year hardware. So your hardware is basically your hitch to bumper uh, type of uh, a warranty as far as that's concerned. But there's a couple other things that they do to these trailers when they're manufacturing them and when you see the finished product. And one of the very first things is when you walk up here and look at this gooseneck area is this vortex lining. It's like a bed liner. This vortex lining is very durable. Uh, in my opinion, when you get into the stall areas, I think it deadens a lot of the noise. Now this trailer is a stock trailer, so we have you know, air gaps, it's not completely sealed up like our horse trailers would be. Uh, we do have plexiglass in this, but when you get in on a lot of those trailers, you get that kind of echoey sound. And I feel like it deadens a lot of that, but more importantly, the strength that it gives. So very, very durable. Uh, one of the best stories I've heard is they took a, a cinder block at the SEMA show, vortex lined it and threw it off a three-story building and it bounced. So very durable as far as that's concerned. Underneath the gooseneck drop area, that's where I, one of the many areas that I really like this Vortex Lining Incorporated. And that's because, you know, if you live down gravel roads, dirt roads, the potential of road blast underneath a, a gooseneck drop area is substantial. I mean, you'll see a trailer and it's just really beat up under here if it sees a lot of those miles. I won't say that it, you can't ever dent one of these, but I, it, it would have to take a substantial amount of force and, you know, a rock at a high velocity to really ding these. For the most part, it'll just bounce off. So again, it gives a lot of durability. And again, that's gonna hold up over time, you know, as we're, as we're using this trailer. They even do it on the drop leg here. So, you know, they incorporate it throughout this trailer, I'll point it out. Um, but I really like that. That is standard on these Logans. One of the other things you get is you do get a hand crank jack. This is actually, uh, this doubles as a lug wrench for you. So you will have that ability um, if you do need to actually go ahead and change a spare tire, this spare tire is turned right now, but this is an aluminum wheel. This matches the ones that we'll show you when we get to the back of the trailer. Some manufacturers will put a set of four aluminums on the ground and then give you a steel for a spare. But we go ahead and put an aluminum option on this and then on the spare as well. One other thing, it's really small, but in my opinion, there's a little light right underneath here and I'll reach up and I'll turn it on. So you have an LED light underneath this gooseneck area. 
you have to think about when you're typically hooking up to these trailers, a lot of times your cargo light on that, you know, on the cab of the pickup is actually blocked by the front of the trailer. So you don't get a lot of light coverage. So they put an LED light there. It's adjustable so we can kind of pivot it. But that way when you're hooking and unhooking, you've got that. And the other thing too is, hey, maybe you're in the middle of you know, the night and you have to change that spare, give you a little bit of light coverage back there if you're needing to get that. And then the switch, they've actually got it right here in the very front corner on driver's side. So it's really easy accessible, even when you're hooked up to a pickup, if you want to turn that on and off from right there. <clears throat> because it's the Stockman model, you do have the uh, stainless sheet on the nose there. You know, sometimes some customers prefer the color match this one here's actually got the stainless that's standard uh, but you can go with the color match if you'd like speaking of color white is standard this one here we opted to go with silver we just try to like mix up the the colors and in inventory to give you kind of some different options the silver the charcoals are really popular they match a lot of the color schemes on today's pickups um, there is no additional charge when you go from white to like silver or charcoal metallic or champagnes. If you go to a black, whether it's a, a black polish finish or the, the black mat, uh, matte option that Logan has, there is an upcharge there. But for, the, for this, there's no additional charge on this one here. Now, let's look at this tack room because this has become such a popular seller for us over the last couple of years in different configurations. We'll do this in a slant wall. This one here is a straight wall. Um, the reason why is, you know, you think about the size of this trailer, it's 26 foot on the floor. You know, you can put a lot of horses on this, a lot of tie rings on the side. So you're going to be able to tie off of each side of this trailer. And now you've got the ability that, Hey, I can go to my side where my saddles are on this swing out saddle rack. They can go to their side. We always joke around here that it's a his and hers. It's, it's a great setup from that standpoint. But as we look at it here, this is a five foot front tack room. And then we have 21 foot in the stall area. But the reason why five foot is we need a little bit bigger uh, door area on these trailers because of the swing out saddle racks. As you can see, you know, when they're tucked in here, they tuck around the corner. We put a little bit of a short wall on this back side of this tack room and then shift the door forward. But as you start swinging this out, you know, you go with a four foot tack um, where you potentially have to have a smaller door because of the framework, I mean, you have to have proper framing on, on the front and back side of these uh, tack doors, you know, then all of a sudden this gap really reduces and then you're going to start hitting your saddle or dragging your saddles on these door frames as you swing these in and out. This gives you a good look here. This is a four tier saddle rack. So you have four pads on here. If you don't want all four, if you want to mix and match every other one, maybe some lower, some higher, whatever you want, you can remove these if you'd like. But really good setup because now we've got four and four on each side of this. I mean, you can haul a lot of horses on this trailer. So in order to carry a lot of tack, that's a definitely a bonus from this standpoint. It's on a gas shock, so it's really easy to swing in and out as far as the tack room is concerned. So as you come in here, we'll take a look up here at the gooseneck deck. You've got dual windows. My opinion, I, if I'm gonna stay in one, I like the dual windows because one, I can see out. I don't wanna get, I could get a little claustrophobic in here, uh, being able to see out. And right now we don't have the windows open. And obviously I know you can't feel this being on the video, but we have these dual doors open. You can literally feel a cross breeze coming through here and it makes it very comfortable. So by having your windows in the gooseneck area, you can create a cross breeze in there as well. And then we just have this sitting up here on the standard models, so the Riots on the horse model side or on the Stockmans on the combo and stock trailer sides, those are standard models. You get this tire changing uh, ramp here. So very easy if you get in a scenario where you have to change a tire, instead of getting a bottle jack out and jacking the trailer up, very simply just drive up on one and then change that tire and then back off or pull forward, whatever you, whatever the scenario is, but that is standard with these. You get some lights in here. There's LED lights. There's one up in the nose. You got one above each door. There's actually switches on both doors as well. So again, whichever access side you come in, you can actually turn these lights on. That's definitely a bonus there. 
Right above me is a clothes bar. So if you're wanting to carry some clothes, hang them up so they're not just draped over something. Uh, that's a good area for that as well. Now on the back side of this partition wall here, they lined it with bridal hooks. So a lot of bridal hooks. There's also carpet behind them. So we don't have, you know, bridles actually rubbing against the wall. Uh, you know, it's not gonna scuff up your wall or that potential of your tack as far as that's concerned. Also, the other thing too is that a lot of people overlook it, but it deadens the noise too. I mean, we've got horses or livestock on the other side of that wall. And as you're driving, you know, things are gonna move and they're gonna create noise. So by having that carpet, it's gonna deaden some of that as far as that's concerned there. Again, a straight wall setup, we can do this in a slant wall. It's really up to you. We can do a lot of different versions as far as this is concerned. Uh, this one here though, we went with a five foot straight. Located directly behind it is gonna be an access gate. So an escape gate right here on this very front side of this stall area. We'll talk a little bit about what we got going in the stall area here in a few minutes, but this is a great access point if you need to just hop in and you know, do something in the, in the stall area or hop out type of scenario there. So again, a galvanized steel frame, but aluminum body. So as you can see this side extrusion here, I mean, if you step away from this trailer, I mean, if you look very, very closely, you can see some of the, the galvanized steel come into play on this as far as the composition is concerned. But if you step away from it and just kind of glance at it, I mean, it does have that appearance of an all aluminum trailer as far as, you know, just the side extrusions. So I think they do a great job on being able to lighten it up so it's not as heavy as an all steel trailer, but still have that good finished look of an aluminum trailer as well. So here, when we get to the axle area, here's a good look at those aluminum wheels. Again, that, that one we had as the spare was turned the other way, so you couldn't see it, but it does match these on the ground here. So we have two 7,000 pound rubber torsion axles. These are eight lugs, 16 inch wheels. These are nitrogen filled tires. And that's what that green cap means on the valve stem. Nitrogen tires will make sure that our air pressure isn't fluctuating as drastic as air can. They use nitrogen on airplanes. So think about the temperature differences, altitude differences, uh, you know, we need to really keep an eye on PSI levels. Uh, I know right now it's trailer safety week and that's one of the very first things that comes into my mind is I keep a tire gauge in the door of my pickup. And it's very simple, it gets overlooked a lot of times, but boy, it's real simple to step out right before you're leaving, check all four tires and check those PSI levels. Because it's a lot simpler for me to know if I just need to put air to a tire or if I've got another issue well, we're not on the side of the road, we're at home, we can maybe address that. Maybe all we need to do is put a little bit of air pressure to it. On these nitrogen filled tires, if you do need to put air to them, you can. A lot of people have a misconception of, well, I have to put nitrogen in them because that's how they're filled. That's what we recommend in today's market. But if you get in those scenarios, not a problem, you can put air to them. You have your tie rings out here. You can always add more. All they do is go to a post. So if you get close and look at this, you can kind of see that these go up to the upright post. So there's some even in the middle. So if you wanted to add more, you definitely can do that. But a lot of, a lot of tie rings out here to actually go ahead and tie up and tack and, or untack as far as that's concerned. You have an eight inch awning light. So those shoot down and out those awning lights as far as the LEDs and, and load lights are concerned. And I really like those because, hey, let's be honest, I mean, especially in this type of a trailer, I mean, this one definitely could go work on a ranch somewhere. Uh, there's potential of driving underneath some trees, some brush, anything like that. And those protruding load lights, the older style that used to be used and still are incorporated here and there on maybe different manufacturers, but those can easily be knocked off because they stick up and off the side of the trailer. Not to say you can't knock that off because it can happen, but now our chances are very, very slim as far as that's concerned. The other thing is plexiglass. We have the two upper air gaps with plexiglass. We like this option because now if you need to seal this trailer up a little bit, you can. Um, if you want to remove them as we get into these warmer months, right at the back here, there's just a piece of aluminum. And as you can see, we just got a couple pieces here that we remove, take it off, slide them all out, 
Uh, in my opinion here, what you need to do is, is I recommend anytime you're dealing plexiglass on a trailer is carry some masking tape, like a painter's tape and a Sharpie. So then you can write driver's side upper, driver's side lower, same on the passenger side. That way you're not having to basically put together a puzzle when you go to put them all back in. Very simple to use and, and believe me, it'll save a lot of, of uh, <laughs> time and energy and potential of bad words being said. I had to put some in a trailer the other day and it took me about 20 minutes where if everything was labeled, it could have taken me about two. I mean, it's, it makes that big of a difference. Here at the back of this trailer, we've got a single gate, no air gaps in it. We'll talk about that when we go ahead and shut that up, but we'll jump into the stall area. But as before we do, there's this little picture right here and kind of some information on this flooring on this trailer. In my opinion, Logan has the best self-draining floor on today's market. And there's the reasons and the steps that they've done in order to do that. As you notice, there's these aluminum planks that run the length of this trailer. So front to back, back to front, whichever way you want to look at life. Um, but as far as these are concerned, they've got a little air gap and there's a little bit of a tip to them. So there's this angle. So we don't allow moisture to come back this way and obviously gravity, gravity is gonna take it out of the trailer. But these are aluminum planks. Urine and aluminum don't really mix well. So uh, urine is acidic, it will eat uh, aluminum over time. So what you need to do is just take proper care of it. But because of these aluminum planks, Logan has taken the vortex lining and lined those. So again, now we don't have that urine and aluminum contact. And then on top of it, this is the finished product that we're looking at here. This is the sure grip flooring. So it is a porous self-draining you know, floor, rubber matting floor. So when urine hits this or other water hit it, it spreads out, goes right out the trailer. Now, the other thing too, is when we go to wash this, now you don't have to pull mats. You know, this is a big stall area, 21 foot by seven, three wide. There's gonna be a lot of mats you're gonna have to pull out of this thing when you go to clean it. But now you don't have to worry about that. Nose it up a little bit, open up your escape door, bring your power washer in here, muck out your bigger solids first, but then just power wash this thing out. Uh, it is amazing to me when I look at these trailers actually in use, uh, I like to peek in them and they just typically seem to be a little bit cleaner. Um, my dad has one of these trailers. I always do like to peek in it because he's running cow calf pears and bulls. And when I look in it, the trailer is just cleaner than all the others. And the reason why is we can get that moisture out of there. And also, let's be honest, it's, it's a lot easier to clean. So if you're gonna volunteer yourself that you have to clean out one of the trailers, this is the one I would pick because now I don't have to pull the mats. Very simple to do as far as that's concerned. But it also gives a lot of grip. So even when it's wet, I mean, there is a lot of grip to this flooring. I know that Logan's been doing some testing with the University of uh, Utah State, I believe it is, um, that they're actually showing the actual cushion as well. And there's more cushion, so it's absorbing more of that shock than even rubber mats would be on this type of a floor. So definitely has a ton of uh, benefits as far as that's concerned on just the longevity of this trailer, ride for your horses, ride for your livestock, whatever it might be. But again, when we're looking at this stall area, as you can see, you can do a lot with this, whether it is horses, livestock, or toys as well, or a mixture of both. You know, you have a 21 foot stall area here. We have a center cut gate. As you can see, there's a little bit of wheel well on the inside here. That's because this trailer is 7.3 wide. It's a little bit wider than most standard trailers but boy, it is nice to have a little bit more stall space, especially in a, a standard option, as far as that's concerned. We've got some LEDs in here as well. So the light switches are on the back. You can run your load lights, stall lights individually. You don't have to have them all on at once. You can literally pick one or two if you want or have everything on. Then you have your center slam gate, which I'm a big advocate on slam gates, especially when we're dealing with, you know, any type of livestock. You know, if you're loading bulls, pears, anything like that, filling this thing full of fats, whatever it might be, it's real safe and real important to have these slam latches because now as we start crowding up, they start pushing back, all we have to do is get it up there and get it locked and, and slam it shut. And I'll show you that on the back gate as well as we're working out of this trailer. Because of the plexiglass and the ability to tie to 
um, upright post. When the plexiglass is in, you can't. You can't get a lead rope around that. So there's a tie rail on the inside. It's actually on both sides of the stall area. It's on the, basically between the two air gaps, but it's in that middle piece of extrusion there, again, on both sides, which honestly, even if you're hauling other stuff, if you need to strap something down, I mean, hey, we've all had to move or do tight, you know, moving items or moving households and you need to be able to strap things down, you have the ability to actually go ahead and strap to this because again, we can't get around those posts. Obviously when the plexiglass is out, you can definitely do that. But again, on these kick mats, there's, there's that vortex lining again. This stuff is really stout. So, I mean, it, it would take something substantial to hit one of these for you to ever get through even the extrusion to see it from the outside of the trailer but a really nice stall setup in here. One last thing I wanna show you on this, because again, some of the competition, uh, you know, this has an aluminum sheeted roof. A lot of the competition does. Our Cimarron brand that we carry, those new ones have insulated roofs on them. But on these aluminum sheeted roofs, I want you to notice on the roof line, there is a bow to it. And the reason why that's important is, is it gets that moisture away from this trailer. It doesn't just sit up there and eat away at those roof seals. You will eventually have to reseal a roof on a trailer. Every single one of them, you have to do that. But the chances or uh, frequency of that are definitely diminished now because we have that roof bow to it. It allows snow to melt, moisture to get off this roof instead of just sitting there. Other brands that have flat roof trailers, we notice when a trailer comes in four, five, six years old, we're having to reseal a roof. That's, that's pretty, in my opinion, that's maybe a little bit quick. Um, you know, we want to get a couple years down the road for, for that type of scenario. But again, it does have that bow to allow that to happen. So let's take a look at this rear gate. Again, like I just mentioned on that center gate, we have a slam latch. So we have a slam latch and then this big cam on the side here to then go ahead and lock it when it's all said and done. So we have a couple points here to actually secure this gate. So again, I'll show you that. So again, if you're pushing something in here and they start crowding back on you, you know, that's a lot safer. Now I can go ahead and get this cam and lock it into place. I don't have to hold that gate in place and then get the cam in place. That's where you get into kind of some not so good situations. The other thing is there's these eyelets on each side of this trailer. So if you're maybe having to create a, a makeshift, you know, corral, if you're loading out in the middle of the pasture, you can secure your uh, panels right to here on each side of this trailer. Um, the other thing too about it is, is, is we always have to worry about the bounce and rear gates on stock trailers, because that's what will create cracks in, in corners high and low. So if we can get the bounce out, well, what have we done? So we have a point where we lock in with our slam and then we've got this cam high and low. Not to say that it can't happen eventually, but you know we have three points and then obviously our hinges on the backside. So we should eliminate a lot of that bounce in this rear gate. The other thing is the no air gaps on the back. Now that is an option that we like to do and there's some reasoning behind that. Uh, if you live down a dirt road, gravel road, travel down them, you know that at the back of a vehicle, whether it's truck, passenger vehicle, whatever it is, the dust swirls at the back of it and usually covers the back. There's usually a big film on the back. You can take your hand and go down and almost, you know, you can write your name on the back of a trailer if you want. But what that does is, is it swirls and it tries to go inside the trailer here. And then what you have is you have your horses, your livestock breathing that dust. And we don't want that. I mean, that's where respiratory issues can come into play. Um, so we like to go ahead and do no air gaps. This one here we did with no air gaps. With the aluminum, you can do an air gap with the plexiglass like we added on this trailer. Uh, but as far as that's concerned, that's why we option that trailer this way. Then as we get over here to driver's side, you know, very similar to what we looked at on the, on the other side of this trailer. You have your upper two air gaps with plexiglass. We have our eight inch awning light, just like the other one. A lot of tie rings down the side of it. Here is the release for that center gate. There's actually a D-shaped release on the inside. So if you have the plexiglass in there, you can reach through and go ahead and release that, but there is an exterior release as well. 
And then as we work forward here to the tack room, there we have the mirroring door area to this front tack room. So I didn't touch, about, touch on it on the other side, but as you can see, this has the four tier blanket pole rack as well on the door and a brush tray for our smaller miscellaneous items. So you can unsnap this, swing it out, put your blankets, pads on there, and then actually secure them against the door itself. And then again, we have our four tier swing out saddle rack, swings in, and then one of the last things I wanna point out, I'm gonna go ahead and shut this door over here. I want you to notice that at the top of this door, it's square. A dead giveaway to tell if a trailer door is a prefab door or made at the factory heavy duty door is if you look at the top. If it is rounded at the top, that is a prefab door. That's, that's one giveaway. The other thing is literally just get the door in your hand. You're gonna notice that this heavy duty door with a lot of framework has a lot more weight to it. A prefab door, no kidding, is like a piece of paper in your hand. Very lightweight, uh, has the potential of just over time, you know, really not sealing well. Um, also just, it's not gonna hold up. And let's be honest, you know, these tack doors are something we're gonna use on this trailer almost every single time we do. So by having a heavy duty door framework from that window over to the edge, you know, again, it's got a, getting a lot of longevity and life to it. These are welded hinges on here as well. So really stout as far as that's concerned. And then there's a drip rail at the top of this door here. So again, as that moisture comes off the roof, we want to get it away from these door areas. So we don't want moisture hitting and going back in and potentially freezing or pot potential leaks. Now they do a really good job on their weather stripping and their framework. But again, it's not 100% seal. It is an open area. So by having that drip rail, again, it's gonna keep that moisture away from the trailer. And there's a good look at that silver as well that we talked about earlier on this trailer. Again, it goes really well with the color concepts in today's market and today's trucks. So I'm gonna give you the stock number on this trailer. This trailer is available today. We had a very similar one to it. It's already sold, uh, but you can give us a call. We do have some others on order as well. So maybe a different concept. Maybe you want that slant wall. We have one of those coming instead of the straight wall. But again, it's a 2022 Logan Coach Stockman combo, 26 foot on the floor, 5N220279. So if you're interested in this trailer, definitely don't hesitate. Give us a call. Trailers are hard to find right now. It takes a lot of time to get them, but we do have a few available. And again, we have some others on order, but if you're in the market too, to possibly build a custom one where you're like, I really like that, but there's a couple changes I'd like to make and you have a little bit of time, we can walk you through that process as well. It's very simple, but give us a call. Anybody on our sales team can help you out. That number is 303-684-3400. We appreciate you tuning in. Have a good day.